Hey, what is up guys? It's your boy Speeder and today we're going to be looking at BZM's Tusk. This is a game where he plays offlane Tusk and this is something we've seen a couple times now. Court Tusk really seems to be a bit of a niche pick that's popping its head into the meta, into these pro games and doing quite well. I thought this Tusk pick was fantastic. This was a last pick Tusk from OG this game. They picked it with a Huskar and Monkey King dual core. And the reason why I thought this was fantastic was Monkey King in particular is a core that really lacks the ability to keep people in his Wukong. I mean, I feel like this is always the thing for me. Anytime a team drafts Monkey King, it is required that they have a Tusk, a Clockwork, some hero that can guarantee that the Wukong will get value. And this Tusk was fantastic that game. Also, Snowball against hard stuns is incredibly good. Secret, who OG was against this game, had five of them. Yes, five hard stunts. As a result, the Tusk pick in the Snowball is a great save as well, and the lane with the Ench is fantastic. So, if you're planning on picking this position 3 Tusk, I highly recommend you give it a shot, as long as you have some sort of Alina, Hoodwink, or Enchantress in your lane, these are the best heroes you can pair with to dominate as offlane Tusk. Also, I want to tell you guys that if you've been struggling with solo queue and you're looking to get to the next rank, I'm going to be able to help you like literally with the Game Leap website. I'm going to give you guys guides that are going to make it unbelievably clear on what you need to do. So if you've been stuck in the solo queue grind, you don't know what to do and you want to become absolutely broken. <laughs> but like actually you want to become much, much better at Dota and you want to take it more seriously. The Game Leap website is going to help you do that. So click the link down below. I'm going to help you get to the next rank and I'll see you there. All right. So getting into the laning stage in terms of a starting item build. I think you can just copy exactly what BZM goes this game, which is the Bracer into Tango's build. All right, now in terms of the laning stage, there's two things you want to do. Number one, just get CS. Like you'll even see here, instead of it instantly shifting over to help his enchanters, BZM puts instead a priority on, you know, securing the range creep, going for the range creep deny. After that, yes, it is much more reasonable for you to shift over and look to use tag team. Tag team is particularly valuable when spells are already down. A big mistake a lot of Tusks will make is they'll just run through the creep wave, try to click tag team, they'll get stunned, kited, take a bunch of damage, and lose all the value from tag team. Here, many of the disables have already been committed, and as a result, the tag team is particularly effective on the Samael, and they do about half of his health. Now, the major spike in the laning stage for Tusk is level 3. Basically, tag team more than doubles in damage. It's just one of those crazy abilities that becomes wildly better, like wildly better from level one to level two. And you'll see in this clip, it instantly pays off here. He hits level three and with a little hesitation, actually dives Sumail, commits the snowball when the stun basically cannot be committed. Th this is really good execution because essentially what, what he could do wrong here is snowball too early. A lot of bad Tusk players in this situation would instantly snowball. They'd stick and then snowball. In this case, against something like a CK, you want to read the stun or snowball when it's already too late for him to stun. So in this case, he snowballs here because the auto attack that he, he used caused him to be out of tag team range. As a result, he knows that, okay, now if I snowball, it will stun Smell for long enough where my next auto will kill him. It was obviously very, very close, nearly did not work out, but at the end of the day, it gets him the first blood, gets him the kill, and now they're off to the races. This is an incredibly good start for BZM. One thing that's very important to note about Tusk is that you want to stay in your lane for as long as humanly possible. I know this has been like my main message for offlane players, but I think it's something that I really stress. Even in this exact instance here, he's losing his mid tier one tower. And this is usually a play where you're like, holy man, I, I you know, he's just losing his mid tier one tower from full HP. I, I can't believe he's not rotating. But the reality is, is that if you're playing Tusk and you make a bad early game rotation, you TP into three heroes with no follow up. What's going to end up happening is that your game is really going to collapse. And I don't mean in the way where, you know, you're the best offlane player in the world, but more so in the way where you're just not going to have enough levels to ever do anything. His first rotation here is going to be a TP onto the DK, but just keep in mind, Tusk does not really have a good way to farm. And as a result, staying in the lane as long as possible and making sure you get those levels is crucial because you're not going to be farming for most of the game. Now, in terms of the early game, let's get into the item build that you want to go. So throughout the laning stage, you want to keep it very simple. You saw he started with the Bracer. After that, you're generally going to go into whatever item you need. Tusk is a hero that has sustained a mana problem. So after that, you're generally going to go into stick into boots. And now heading into the mid game, you're just going to really double down on stats. What he did this game was he went phase boots into corrosion into Wenlace into belt of strength. 
This wind leaves and built to strength is going to later build into drums, one of my personal favorite items in the game that I've been saying for a while now I think is pretty broken. You guys can, you know, go back and check the videos. And now it seems like it's in every single pro game, unlike every hero, but it's a really great item on Tusk because the strength and, and the early movement speed from wind lace is exactly what you want on this hero. But basically as Tusk, the game plan is simple. Look for the squishy heroes that you blow up. Okay, this can be cores like Lina, like Leshrac. They can be safe laners like something like an underfarm Slark. These are the heroes you want to go on. And in particular, the more follow up, the better. But these heroes that lack a disengage get dumpstered by Tusk. On top of that, one thing to note is you can cast shards while snowballing. A lot of people don't know this. In general, the execution for Tusk is you snowball at someone, then you punch them, then you shards. However, if they are disengaging and the snowball is too slow to catch up to a fast hero like Lena with bots, then you should commit the shards to make sure that the snowball connects and it sets up for the punch. And you can see this is immediately going to be a pretty favorable engagement. It's a really good play by Puppy to try to stall it out here, but they end up getting on top of Nisha and eventually taking him out. It was actually, yeah, it was, it was actually a really good response from Puppy on the Bane there, nearly clutching up but eventually they chase him down. All right, another cool thing that people forget that you can do on Tusk is you can snowball through to save, right? So essentially what I mean by that is what most Tusks do, and it's, it's a fine play, is when they're trying to save someone, they walk up to them, they click snowball, then they right click on their teammate, that puts them in the snowball and it buys time. However, in desperate situations, you want to snowball like this. You can see with no hesitation, BZM phase boots over, casts a snowball, and then as he's coming through, clicks the snowball on the Huskar, and it just buys enough time for the Huskar to get repositioned and brought to the side. I think, I think it saves him because otherwise the Huskar would have gotten gripped. I'm pretty sure this is not the grip from Puppy. Maybe he thought the Huskar was dead anyway. It ends up being really an incredible save from BZM. I, I think they would have had to imagine that the Huskar was going to die. <laughs> but he just barely lives the reach end that he got from that basically a second of time. Completely saves him. Then Misha is able to shift over on the Abaddon and they win the fight. So generally you don't want to have to snowball like that uh, because often it kind of will just get you killed if the save doesn't end up working out. But in desperate situations, especially when you're playing around some hyper core like Huskar, it is the way to go and it's a super nice play from BZM. Also in terms of talents, BZM surprises me a little bit this game. He goes for the Walrus Punch Stun Duration. Now you'd have to expect on a core Tusk you'd want to take Tag Team duration, uh, Damage because it works with the punch, right? A lot of people don't know, but anytime you're playing Tusk, you always, always, always should cast your, your Tag Team before you punch. It is a significant amp in damage. If you punch without Tag Team, your hero practically does zero damage in the early game besides like the damage that your teammates do when you're Tag Teaming. So this is a little bit weird, but I think the reason why it's good, especially in a game like this, is... His main target is the Lina. Lina is a hero that heavily, and I mean heavily, relies on BKB to function, right? This is a hero that stands still with BKB and then disengages on her BKB timing, right? She mans up for a little bit and then on the back half of the BKB, she resets. The thing about Tusk is he's one of the hardest BKB counters in the game and this talent amplifies that. The reason why is, number one, punch goes through BKB, so does the stun. And I think the slow does as well. And on top of that, shards is obviously an ability that ignores BKB. So clearly his idea here is keep the Lina in the Wukongs, keep the Lina near the Huskar, lock her down. And I think that makes sense. Now you might be thinking to yourself, speed, should I go Deso on this hero? Should I like double down on right clicking? I honestly think if you're going to play offlane Tusk, you should not go that build. It just doesn't really work. Like it's too... It's too glass cannon. It, it just often it's too clunky to, to function. Now, I do think there's games where like you're having the greatest game of all time. You get a blink, you get a BKB, then you can go Deso. That's okay. But I think buying it like earlier than, you know, what I just mentioned is generally a mistake. Instead, what you want to do is what he's doing here. You know, snowball onto an opponent, have a plus one or a plus two, pop your drums and then shred people in tag team. This is why drums is so good. The bonus attack speed that you give when everyone is around you with tag team shreds opponents. All right, next up, let's take a look at this engagement here. So BZM has to make a couple of key decisions. He sees that the words go out. One thing that you want to note is that you don't always necessarily want to instantly snowball. In this clip he does here, I think it almost or was a mistake. The reason why I say that is often when you snowball, you're fully committed, right? You can't kite, you can't dodge any stuns, you can't save any teammates. So instantly snowballing in, you really need to make sure if you're going to do this, your team is ready to follow. 
Otherwise, you're just gonna commit in and die. <laughs> it's kind of like sanking Burrow Strike in the laning stage. If you, it, it's an ability that commits you forward very heavily, right? So none of your abilities are gonna get you out. As a result, the Snowball Line does end up connecting. Uh, I think he kind of makes the wrong reaction of not clicking his drums here. If you're going to die, basically what you should do is just click all of your abilities, make sure you can disengage. So I would say maybe a slight mistake, but he ends up getting saved. Thankfully, over committing in a game like this, or quote unquote over committing in a game where you have an Abaddon and an Ench and even a Huskar to back you up, is a lot more reasonable, right? So it ends up working out because he gets saved, gets the punch onto Samel, saves enough time, beautiful shards onto the Bane, isolating Nisha as well. And I think they eventually catch Puppy on the back half of this, leaving the snowball, putting his teammates in for the bonus damage and winning them the fight. So be a little bit careful with your, your snowballs. In general, once again, even in these mid-game team fights, you need to make sure you're doing one of two things. Jumping a tanky core that has, you know, that can be followed up on, or just bursting some support. These are your best two options. In general, though, I would say going on a hero like Lena or Leshrac with a plus one is your best bet, especially with this drums build. Getting to the mid game, you can clearly tell that BCM has, you know, a very profound understanding of who he needs to jump. Because in this team fight, even though his initial jump onto the Lena that we're about to see doesn't instantly kill her, it completely ruins her ability to actually do damage. And sometimes this is a key thing to understand about Dota. The jump you, you perform doesn't always have to burst someone. Sometimes it can just be enough to bring attention to yourself, tank spells, especially, you know, if we look at the networks here, he's not the carry, okay? His job is to enable the Huskar and the Monkey King. He doesn't need to stay alive. It doesn't mean he should kill himself. A lot of offlane players are like, Speed, I'm under farmed and I go in and my team doesn't help me. But then you watch their replay and it's like they're diving the tier four <laughs> or, they're, or they're like jumping into four heroes when their teammates are like Medusa. And it's like, you're not enabling your team, right? You need to look at your heroes. If you're playing with a Medusa, you need to make sure you're staying close to that Dusa. You're, you're enabling that Dusa. Huskar and Monkey King couldn't go a little bit further, so so can you. And we can see here, this is his best target. We talked about earlier why that's the case. He finds Nisha on the side, punches her up, ends up getting gripped. It's like, whatever, you know, I'm, all right, I'm getting gripped. I get pulled in. I get, you know, DK stunned. Honestly, I have no idea why I size I stun here. Right? Uh, frankly, I have no clue. This is like a wild overcommitment from Secret. Uh, I think they arrow him as well. I don't know. It's a wild overcommitment from Secret onto the Tusk. He ends up getting Snowball off anyway as a result of the Abaddon shield. And you can see this sets up for a beautiful uh, Wukong onto the onto the CK. But the bigger part here, kind of what I was mentioning is you're going to... Let's watch from the Lena's perspective. She's going to have to spend the first like five seconds of the fight walking away. Now you might be like, oh, speed, she gets out. That's a good thing. Yeah, she gets out, but she has to, once again, spend the majority of the fight walking away. She's like, I have to walk away from Tusk and Huskar. Now I have to walk away from Wukong. She didn't hit anybody. Like, like look at this Lena. He's like, I don't know what to do. All right, I guess I'll hit Misha. Oh, I'm stunned. Okay, uh-oh, I'm dead, right? And this is not like some mega stun, right? I mean, they were 4K up on OG, but this is not some... Oh, the game is over. It's just a beautiful initiation from BCM that sets up for the Wukongs, right? He tanks Dragon Tail. He tanks the Grip. But it wasn't tanked in a way where his team couldn't follow it up. No, I, I'm stressing this because it's big for me. If you tank spells in a shitty way where your teammates cannot help you, it's not good. Okay? It has to be this... It's this fine line. What the hell? That gets so bugged on towers. What in the world? <laughs> Um, but <laughs> please keep that in mind. You have to really learn this. I mean, even me just saying it is not really enough. You kind of have to study replays. I mean, obviously, I'm, I, I'm helping you guys with this replay. It should show you um, uh, kind of what I'm talking about. But nonetheless, beautiful execution from OG. Finally, he ends up going for the Vlads. Honestly, this is not an item I'm a fan of. Personally, I prefer him to buy a four staff or even a Deso at this point. Um, I think BKB is fantastic as well. Uh, he obviously is just, once again, doubling down on keeping his teammates alive, but yeah, I, I don't know. I, I, don't, I personally don't like the Vlads. I don't think it's it's good here. Either way, another item you can buy as well is the uh, is the Ags. Instead of Vlads, you can go Ags, and it's pretty cool because you can basically just kick people into your team. It's a really fascinating playstyle. You blink in, you kick them, and then you snowball to them, and it's really, really good at isolating heroes. We're not going to see it in this game, but it's just something I wanted to mention. And just because I, I think it's it's really fitting for the video, let's, let's show a clip where BZM just clearly overextends. Um, this is a great example of what not to do. So uh, thank you, BZM, for doing this. It's, you know, it's a very good example for my video, so I appreciate it. But he's going to go in, and you're going to see he's, he looks for an initiation onto Lina. We talked about, yeah, why this is good. But what ends up happening here is he blinks in, snowballs, 
but the Lina was so fast, so honestly, props to Nisha. I mean, I think it probably would have been bad anyway. I mean, I think what ends up being the case here, or what was the case, is that um, the CK is pushing bottom, so he's like, okay, they're not even fighting, they don't want to fight us, we're AK ahead with an Aegis, like, I'm just gonna go in if I see the Lina. So, like, makes complete sense, right? This is not some horrendous jump, it's, it's reasonable. But Nisha, honestly, you can tell this is why this guy's a pro. Instant reaction time on the spider legs goes over the racks, causes the snowball to not connect until the end, and just completely causes the tusk to overcommit, and he gets screwed. Obviously, this is not, I repeat, not how you want your initiation to go. You need to be very careful about your snowball being kited into the enemy. You do not want snowballs to be full duration. I assure you, it's bad almost always. All right, getting into one of our last fights of the game. Basically, you generally want to, once again, look for the overextended squishy heroes. I know I'm repeating myself from earlier, but the main thing about Dota is kind of understanding what your hero does well. Now, of course, he could go on someone like a DK. That is obviously nice, but if you can go on to the Bane or onto Lina, that's going to be optimal. So in this team fight here, let's watch his execution. He goes onto the Brana here, punches her up. I think he drops the shards eventually to try to do enough damage to kill her off. Probably should have sharded a bit earlier. Might have killed her. Okay, no. But he shards considers the snowball save one thing you want to do is you don't want to snowball save into the enemy most of the time unless you like don't have any other options so he tried to snowball to the creeps and bring husker to here which would have been a fantastic play unfortunately was a little bit slow there so at this point you're just you have no snowball no tag team no shards just kite out don't run in don't be stupid a lot of people would run in here you know out of panic don't panic don't run in just wait resets wait for the blink to come up finds the bane beautiful jump completely isolated and they get the kill. Also doesn't get him killed, so that was completely, you know, the best case scenario. Honestly, a huge mistake from Puppy. And, um, yeah, now he's just gonna keep playing the outside, gonna continue to look for the Lina, finds her in this case, gets the jump onto Lina, gets gone on. I think he ends up living this. Oh my god. The Abaddon had an Axe at this point of the game, which is, like, kind of an Axe I don't like. It's not because I think the Axe is bad, I think the Axe is insanely good. It's just, like, so expensive on a hero that has a hard time getting items, but <laughs> either way, he ends up getting it, and, uh, yeah, that's going to be the end of the game. Nonetheless, thank you guys so much for watching. Hopefully you enjoyed. It's a really fun hero to play. Just keep in mind, you really need to make sure you have some sort of a playable lane. If the lane goes poorly, you will have a horrible game. So try to pick it with a lane dominating position four. Um, it's particularly good as well if you think the position five is not good against your hero. Funny enough, you're actually pretty good against Bane. Um, even though Bane's a good, you know, good laner, tag team is often just a little bit too overwhelming for him. And you can even snowball off Nightmare from teammates, so... That's kind of cool as well. But nonetheless, thanks for watching. I'll see you guys in the next one. And I'm out. Peace. And that's all. But remember, before you leave, come on, before you tune out, subscribe to the Game Leap website where we are going to help you get to the next rank. If you're stuck, click the link down below. And I'm out. Peace.